Welcome back to Great SpaceX. Before we jump into the first part of today's episode, we have some exciting news to share. We have just hit 100,000 subscribers on our channel! So we want to express our sincere gratitude for your continued support and for being part of the incredible community. It's thanks to viewers like you that we are able to bring you the best content possible. We are committed to reciprocating your support and look forward to continuing this journey together. Now, let's get started! After the cancellation of Monday's Starship test launch, the SpaceX team promptly initiated bug fixes and preparations for the upcoming test, which is scheduled no earlier than Thursday. On the orbital launch mount, it's through the night with the flashlights. The work should be related to the B7 or booster quick disconnect valve, the Monday launch scrubs cause. At the time of this report, SpaceX doesn't seem to have completed fixing it yet. Speaking of valves, Starship has multiple valves that are used to control the flow of propellants and other fluids throughout the vehicle's systems. These valves are critical components in the operation of the Starship, allowing for precise control of the rocket's engines and other systems. In reality, valve problems are not uncommon with all rockets. Remember the SLS's faulty valves that actually messed up many times? Rocket engine valves are finicky, specifically with liquid oxygen ones, or LOX. The LOX valves must withstand extreme cryogenic temperatures. LOX is stored and used at a temperature of around negative 183 degrees centigrade, which puts a significant strain on the valve components. The materials used in the construction of the valves must be able to withstand these cryogenic temperatures without becoming brittle or losing their structural integrity. Moreover, the low temperatures can cause the valve to stick or become frozen, as Starship met on Monday, making it difficult to open or close the valve. Besides that, LOX is stored at high pressures, typically around 30 to 50 bar. This high pressure puts a significant stress on the valve components, and they must be designed to withstand these pressures without leaking or failing. Additionally, the valve actuation mechanism must be capable of operating reliably under these high pressure conditions. Plus, LOX is a strong oxidizer that can react with many materials, including metals, plastics, and lubricants. This reaction can result in combustion, ignition, or explosion, making it critical to use materials that are compatible with LOX. The valves must be made from materials that are not susceptible to combustion or ignition when exposed to LOX. Furthermore, the valves must be designed in a way that minimizes the risk of LOX ignition or explosion, such as by incorporating pressure relief mechanisms. Precision and reliability are crucial factors in the design of LOX valves. The valves must be able to control the flow of LOX with extreme accuracy to ensure proper combustion in the engine. Any variations in the flow rate, direction, or timing can result in inefficient combustion, reducing the performance and efficiency of the engine. Additionally, LOX valves must be able to operate for long periods without failing, as failure could result in catastrophic consequences. That's why, before the launch, Musk admitted, I mean, I have a concern list a mile long. Until now, the 420 date is still the current target. SpaceX has backup dates from the 21st to the 28th of April. So only time will tell when Starship can really take off. In short, orbital rockets are a hard problem, as Musk tweeted yesterday in response to the news of the Ariane 6 proving to be a disaster for European space policy. After much political wrangling among Germany, France, and Italy, the member governments of the European Space Agency formally decided to move ahead with the development of the Ariane 6 rocket in December of 2014. A replacement rocket for the Ariane 5 was needed, European ministers decided, because of cost pressure from commercial upstarts like SpaceX and its Falcon 9 rocket. With the design of the Ariane 6, they envisioned a modernized version of the previous rocket optimized for cost, because Ariane 6 would use a modified Vulcan engine and other components from previous Ariane rockets, it was anticipated that the new rocket would debut in 2020. European space policy, however, is every bit as political as that of the United States, if not more so. Member nations of Europe make financial allocations to the European Space Agency and expect roughly that amount of money in return in terms of space projects. So the development and production of Ariane 6 was spread across a number of nations under management of a large conglomerate, 
France-based Aryan group. This approach combined the worst of the parochial politics that guide NASA funding in the United States with the sluggish activity of a traditional aerospace company accustomed to guaranteed contracts. Therefore, naturally, development of the project has lagged and gone over budget. And as of this video, the public date for the debut launch of the Ariane 6 remains late 2023. But the rocket's first flight will certainly slip into 2024, and its development budget has nearly doubled to $4.4 billion. Nearly a decade. That is a lot of time and money for Europe to develop what is essentially a poorer version of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, or as the kids call it nowadays, the Falcon 9 from Wish.com. So why is Europe developing a rocket that costs more than a Falcon 9 and is a decade late to the party? because European nations desire independent access to space. This means that European nations can have their own way of putting their most valuable military and scientific satellites into space without having to rely on NASA, Russia, or the whims of American billionaires. This is a justifiable decision in light of geopolitical events that have cut off Europe's access to the Russian Soyuz rockets. Unfortunately, the Ariane 6 rocket is now failing even at its most basic and important task. Politico reports that the European Commission, the executive arm of the European Union, is looking to buy rides on the Falcon 9 rocket due to ongoing delays in readiness of the Ariane 6. Previously, the European Commission has booked six launches on the Ariane 6 rocket to launch Galileo satellites, two in 2017 and additional four in 2020, each carrying two satellites. Under the current plan, three of these missions are supposed to launch in 2023. There's no chance of that, of course, and the first of these Galileo flights will not take place until after the debut flights of the Ariane 6, so likely not before the second half of 2024 at the earliest. Apparently, the European Commission has seen enough Ariane 6 delays. The two US rockets capable of picking up the slack from a technical standpoint are SpaceX's Falcon 9 and United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket. The problem for Europe is that Vulcan is also running well behind its development curve. The vehicle's first launch is now planned for no earlier than this summer, and Vulcan has commitments to the US Department of Defense that will likely preclude taking on new commercial customers for a few years. That leaves only Le Falcon 9. For Europe, the optics of this are terrible, of course. Its commissioners created the Ariane 6 to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Now, a decade later, officials from the continent are going to have to negotiate with SpaceX for a ride to space for some of their most precious satellites. Never mind that the cost is likely to be lower and that the Falcon 9 is the most reliable rocket in the world with the lowest insurance costs. It's quite the bitter pill to swallow. In any case, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.